Hey guys, it's Dawn here, and today I want to um, go ahead and show you how to use this machine. I'm going to um, target this as if a person has never sewn before, alright? So this is a Nomi 11706, I believe, and it is a full machine, but it's a three-quarter size, so it's a smaller, it's a smaller overall machine and it's geared more towards the beginners so it's very very easy to use but um <clears throat> actually let me try to back up a little bit okay so to you're going to plug it in plug it in right there there's only one way it can go in then you're going to have two cables coming out one is to your foot pedal that controls the machine one is um you plug it in okay um you typically want to plug it into a um some kind of surge protector and also always make sure to unplug it well turn it off um, unplug it from here or turn off your surge protector because and the reason behind that is because uh, if anything was to pr if all of this was left on and anything was to press on the foot pedal then it will run the machine things can overheat um, I don't know house could burn down or whatever okay not so much on on a newer machine like this especially since it has an on off switch but what if you forgot and left it on so it's just a good habit to, um, to unplug it and then for a newer machine usually they have um, uh, electronic components to it so if you leave it plugged in and there was a surge it could bust something electronically and then um, those are typically very expensive machines and so yeah you just want to get into a habit of always unplugging or turning the surge protector off um, but this one does have, a, have an on off switch right here and when you turn flip that switch then you'll see the light comes on and the light is in there okay so this is your hand wheel and you can also control the up down movement with the hand wheel and with the hand wheel it can pull out or it can push back in when you pull it out it will actually disengage the clutch so uh, what that means and when you would use that is if you want to wind the bobbin the bobbin winder is over here you stick the bobbin on there and I'll show you all that but basically um, when you pull this out and you f turn the bobbin winder on by by pushing it over to the right then when you step on the foot pedal oh <laughs> it'll help if I turn on the machine then you'll see that the bobbin winder is turning but the needle is not moving anywhere it's not if the needle is not moving up and down it is only the bobbin winder that's because okay you're winding the bobbin so when you want to switch it back to regular sewing mode you push this back over to the left and you have to re-engage the clutch by pushing the hand wheel in okay then when you do that now when you step on the foot pedal then this will move so if that you know you can use that to troubleshoot if something goes wrong all right um let's see in order to sew you need thread on the top and the bottom the bottom is called the bobbin thread um, or your bottom thread the top thread would be something like this you want to use the best quality thread possible uh, Guterman is good oh, oh man I can't remember the other brands but Coates and Clark is kind of middle um, to to economy um, Guterman is this and this is considered a uh, better thread and then there there are a, a bunch of other ones but I can't think of right now but Coates and Clark is very very common <coughs> but that's considered a little bit more on the low end um, now I use a thread stand and I use this one I just got it off Amazon I prefer a thread stand over using the regular thread holder which on this machine it's on the back Actually, I'll turn it around so this is the back of the machine and here is the thread holder so all you do is pop this right in make sure that it's going down that center hole and then you would thread it like that now the reason why I don't like this as much this gives you more control and a more even feed of the thread the whole point of the thread uh, something that's very important is that the thread always wants a very good tension okay you'll hear that a lot so this provides a very even tension um, anyways I really really prefer this um, the way 
that it comes off of the spool vertically versus horizontally can make a difference. Um, if it is wound like this or if it's a cone shape <coughs> and it's uh, wound crisscross, that will make a difference. And if the thread spins it or it gets... Um, I don't know, spins around and it, it twists, it twists up and stuff, then that'll make a difference, okay? So, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you forget how to wind a bobbin, the instructions are also on here. So, let's see, okay, so thread, good thread. Um, I like having these scissors to cut thread. Nice sharp tip, and these are for sewing. And uh, make sure that your sewing scissors are not your general use scissors that you use for cutting paper and stuff. Fabric and sewing scissors should be kept separate. <clears throat> All right, so, okay, so the top thread. Let's go ahead and go into threading. Um, oh, here's a handle, by the way. All right, let's see. Actually, let me do the stuff that I can do while holding the camera. So you flip this out and you can put your thread in here and then your thread is going to go over here and through this and then you'll see the arrow, okay, at the top. You're going to go down this channel and then you'll see this arrow make the U come back up here and make sure that your arm is all the way up and you do that by turning the hand wheel. You're gonna go up and around and just follow that arrow. So that means the thread's gonna come from the right over to the left and it's going to get caught up. It's gonna get slid into here and then the thread's gonna end up resting in here. And then you're gonna come down this channel and then when you come down this channel on any machine you always want to check and see if you see any thread guide over here sometimes they have a final thread guide here before they get to the needle this one does not but it does have a thread guide on the needle bar itself right there so you want to make sure that you hook onto there and then you're going to thread it in and this one threads from the front to the back some thread from <clears throat> the right to the left or whatever this one is from front to the back okay all right so i have my thread over here and i'm going to wrap it around the first one coming from the left over then i'm going to come down this first channel loop it around here and loop it around here and just just pull over this way actually Let's see. and it'll click and it'll catch right in there and then I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna hold the thread like this so that I can um, loop it through here and now you'll see it's caught in there and then I'm gonna lick my finger and wipe it on the end of the thread so I can just thread that needle so now this is done and I will show you close up over here so from the spool over here the threads gonna come over here and just loop right in there come down this first channel go up from the, let me move this, from the right over here to the left. So you see you're basically just looping it around so that the thread is going to end up in between there. Okay, the thread is just going to slide, slide over here, pop over this little springy thingy and end up in this little well. Then you're going to go back down this channel and then you have this thread guide here. It's just going to hook. So just come from the left over and then it'll hook on. And then from the needle from the front, thread it to the back. All right. So anytime for any machine, it's always going to follow pretty much this type of path. 
and it's gonna it's gonna come around it's gonna attach somewhere in, th in the back here it's gonna zigzag around and you'll never see it crossing the thread crossing the whole point of this is that you always want to have the proper tension you don't want any loose slack on the on the thread so <clears throat> you'll see it's kind of hard to see but you see this thread this thread has this tension on it, okay? That is a proper tension, and you always want to maintain that tension. Now, what happens is sometimes when you're running the machine, if there's any catches and stuff, then this will flop around. And when it does that flopping thing, that's when you can have a skip stitch or any kind of problems with stitching, which is why I like to have um, uh, the thread stand instead. So, um, now to regulate the tension, this is your tension, uh, your upper tension assembly. And all you do is you just turn it. So the lower number is going to be less tension. The higher number is going to be more tension. And it goes all the way to nine. It's zero to nine. And typically, it's going to stay around five. Um, my most commonly used will probably be from two to seven. If you are beyond that range, then probably something else is wrong. But typically, I can stay at five for most everything. So you don't have to worry about that too much. This is your reverse switch. It's on a spring. So when you want to reverse, you just hold this down as long as you want reverse done. And then you just lift it back up again. And you can use that while you are still depressing the pedal or you can stop pressing and um, hold this down and then press your pedal again. And on this button, it does have a little symbol on here that shows that it's a reverse. All right. So um, when you want to select what kind of stitch you want, you just have one knob here. And this is your stitch selector. And it tells you exactly what it's going to do. So basically, you have... A, and and you line it up to here. So A is going to be your small straight stitch, medium straight stitch, large straight stitch, small zigzag, medium zigzag, large zigzag, the dotted zigzag, and these things that, um, it's kind of like an overcast stitch, um, or I don't know, I call them EKG stitches and, and all that. Then this is for your button holers um, to make a button hole. So it shows you all of that right here. And I also made a swatch here so you can see it too. So let me put this down. And it's everything in the red thread. So you have your your largest, your largest, medium, and smallest straight stitch. Small zigzag, medium zigzag, large zigzag. This is your dotted zigzag, and then your your EKGs. Okay. Um, all right. So the top thread is done. And what I like to do if um, I'm going to get ready to sew it, well, actually, I'm going to, okay, hold off on that. So now you're, now, remember, you have two threads. You have the top thread and you have the bottom thread. So the bottom thread is going to be in your bobbin area. And so to, to get into that space, there's a hole um, right under here that you can slip your finger right in there. And then you just pull this straight out. Um, to the left it just slides out and then when you also do this you you have now turned your machine into a free arm machine it's called a free arm because you can slide things under there and that way if you have a sleeve or something you can slide the whole sleeve under here and then sew which is really really handy um, this is also a little compartment area that you can hide um, parts or things uh, some people like to hold snacks in there for sewing so this is your bobbin compartment and in here this uh, will be where your other thread is kept and it's kept in this bobbin case and the bobbin so that is the bobbin that is the bobbin case and here is your uh, hook assembly <coughs> 
and all that. Um, now, let's see. This area here gets very, very linty. Also, there's lint going to gather up here. Every time you use it, go ahead and clean out any of the lint and use a Q-tip. Do not use compressed air because what you don't want to do is blow any lint back in there. Hopefully all of the lint that accumulates from your thread and your fabric it's going to fall down into this compartment right here. You can use a vacuum with one of those micro um, attachments and suck out lint. You can use a q-tip which is not as ideal um, but you can pull out lint that way. You can use um, little tweezers like this and grab lint and also you can grab threads and stuff. You always want to keep this area as clean as possible. That's going to extend the life of your machine. Um, so uh, let's see in here. If you need to pop this out for any reason you just turn these and then you can pop this whole thing out but now we're getting into stuff that <coughs> a beginner <coughs> sorry, probably shouldn't be doing. All right, so now here is your bobbin, and you want to make sure that it always has thread. And this is the amount of thread that I like to dangle about this. This is the amount of thread I like to dangle off of the bobbin. Eh, it's hard to see. All right, so to put this thread into this bobbin case, um, you're going to find this this little arm that sticks up. This arm that sticks up is actually going to match up with this little um, uh, there's a little notch right in there when you put this in. I'll show you that later. But uh, this also has a little latch. When it snaps in to there it will click and lock in and then you have to pull this uh, this little lever here to unlock it to pull it back out. Be very careful because you can pull this so hard and break it, okay? There shouldn't ever be any force. Now to put the bobbin in, you want to have the thread coming up from the left side, okay? So if I turn this around, this is the thread coming up from the right side. You see how the thread is coming up from the right side. This is the thread coming up from the left side. You want the thread coming up from the left side. Mm -mm. And you are going to, uh, when you know that the thread is coming up from the left side like this, your, your arm is on top and you're just going to slide this in. When you do that, now you'll see on the top here, there is a little notch. And so you're going to slide this right into the, just catch the thread right into that notch like that. And then you're just going to pull it over here until it clicks. Because you want it coming out here. So the thread path is actually, the thread comes up the left side, goes in through this notch, and then just slides over and is over here. This is your bobbin tension control right here, this little screw. Do not mess with that. Right now, this tension is set um, just right, but if you do have to mess with the bobbin tension, then that's where you would do it. Uh, lefty loosey, righty tidy. turn it to the left to make this bobbin tension looser, and then uh, to the right to make it tighter. But typically, you do not have to mess with that, all right? So now, that I have this, then I can pop it in. Oh, before I do that, since I have this out, oh, and to pull it out, you just, you know, hold it like that, and it'll fall out, and then you just pull the thread back out. But before we do that, let me go ahead and show you how to wind the bobbin. All right, so now to wind the bobbin, you are going to um, have the thread coming from your spool. Thread comes onto the top comes over here it's just gonna loop around this way and just make this V okay 
make sure that it slides into there because this does hold it and then you're going to go from inside the spool and come out so there the thread is going inside the spool come out and what I like to do some people wind it around the bobbin a few times I just hold this taut and um, oh, remember this is slid over uh, once I pop the bobbin onto the the black stand then I push it over to the right and I've pulled out my hand wheel so I've um, disengaged so let me loop this around once it has wound around a few times or you can man manually wind it around then um, it, it will be set and then you can just snip off the excess and then you can focus on just making sure that it's winding evenly so you're going to step on the pedal if you find that it's not winding evenly you can use your finger to actually guide the thread. So I've, I've wanted to go lower or higher. Like that. So you'll notice that um, right now it had jumped off of here and it's just going straight across there and that is the the reason why is because this is bouncing around as it's pulling through there and that is um, one of the reasons why I like using this thread stand it will eliminate all of that bouncing around that it's doing over here this is at an angle and stuff so that's why it's doing it um, and also I was messing around with um, my finger in the way and stuff like that so you won't have that problem uh, if you're not messing around with it and everything and don't don't try to go super fast try to keep a nice steady uh, speed so when you're done just pull it back over to the left uh, pop your clutch back in which I can't do with one hand there and then pull your bobbin out and what you want to look for is that it's nice and even all the way across you don't have all your thread bunched up on one side or the other okay and then I need to wind my th uh, thread my my machine again so it's already on the top thing and I'm gonna come down come up come around over here it latched on I'm going to hook around this thread guide over here lick my finger and kinda wet that um, the end of the needle I mean end of the the thread and then thread it from the front to the back okay so that one is done and now I got to um, put this back in so I want the thread coming up from the left <clears throat> so it's coming up from the left side and I want this arm to be up top pop this right in and I have to hold it pinch and hold come through that little notch and slide on over so now it's in here and I want to make sure I have a good length so that's that's a good length to have the arm is on top so you see how that arm on top is going to match up with this notch over there that's exactly how I want it so still kind of pinching it like this I'm going to feel for this center hole that center hole is going to go in right there through the center so I'm feeling for that center hole and I want to match this up if it spins around that's fine just you know right now it's in that center that center pin and then you're just going to push that in and it'll click and you know this arm is in there it can only go in one way and then you have your little bit of thread um, just dangling right there and that is perfect and if you forget any of that there is a chart over here and it does show you to remind you that the thread should come up from the left side and um, here it gives you some instructions all right so right here I am done and I click that into place now 
Okay, I want to sew something, and I have my my thread in on the on the top, and I have my thread in on the bottom. Um, I don't want to use a free arm. I'm just going to turn it back into a regular bed. And now I want to sew. So from here, I have this thread here, right? And I don't have the bobbin thread um, anywhere. It's still down below in the bed. So what I'm going to do, I want that bobbin thread up up here. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this thread with some light tension, just enough tension to keep that kind of taut, okay, just straight. And I'm not pulling on it or anything. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use my hand on the hand wheel, and I'm just going to turn the hand wheel towards me. You always want to turn the hand wheel towards you, not backwards. Um, you can jiggle a little bit if you need to, but always, if you're going to make turns, turn it towards you. So turn it towards you, and I'm still holding this with some tension. And I'm just going to make one revolution. Now, right now, it has caught on something. The upper thread is now caught on something. You see that? That's your first sign that something is doing good. It has caught that bobbin. So as I continue to turn towards me and the needles going through its its cycle I continue to pull this up and now look at that it has pulled over it has brought up the bobbin thread for me that's it right there so now that I have the bobbin thread now I can pull it up now you can see that you have your top thread from the needle and you have your bobbin thread coming from the underside. Now what I like to do is with the presser foot up, I'm just going to guide both of these thread down this center gap that is in the foot and I'm just going to I'm just going to push it off to the back. All right? Now everything is ready to sew. So here I'm going to point out some other um, parts this lever right here this is how you raise and drop your presser foot this is your presser foot right here this knob right here this black knob this is you unscrew that so you turn it towards you to remove that needle um, this is your presser foot it's a low shank presser foot and it's also it also has a it's a snap-on feet so these are the feet and this is the the low shank um, a snap on foot adapter and you just line it up and lower your presser foot and then it'll click into place and that's how it snaps on and off this lever drops it and um, also and if you want to change the this adapter you just unscrew that and pop this whole thing out all right so uh this is your throat plate and it has all of your thread guides on there so once again down this gap this thread and the thread coming out the back everything is set up to use the machine and I know that this seemed like a lot of talk and stuff, but I was pointing stuff out. This goes really fast once once you get a, the hang of it, and it's really simple. And this knowledge right here will apply to just about any machine out there. Um, other machines are just going to have more features or something like that, but this basic principle, this basic foundation will apply to just about every machine out there. All right, so with the presser foot up, I am going to, uh, okay, now there's all these different things about it, so you can choose what you want to do, but um, I like to put my presser foot down and hold on to the threads You just hold it on lightly. This, this is more for vintage machines to hold the thread and also to lower your needle. Um, that step right there, that's more for vintage machines. You don't have to do that so much with this machine and modern machines because they've fixed that whole thing. But, um, oh, 
and then you select whatever stitch you want um, and then you just press on the, the presser foot. Now midway here I want to switch to zigzag so my tip is I'm going to leave the presser foot down but I'm going to raise the needle up and the reason why is when you change stitches right now I'm turning the, the knob you see how the needle is moving as well I don't want the needle stuck in the fabric while it's trying to move and change um, change positions so that's why I like to raise the needle up before I change positions once I've selected right now I've told it that I want to do a small zigzag so um, I'm gonna stop I want to raise it up because I now I want to say I want to do medium zigzags so it's going to do medium zigzags, and now um, I say I want to do um, a medium straight stitch. So then, uh, now if you want to pivot, then you want to have your needle down, lift up your presser foot, and then you can pivot all day long without losing your spot. Okay, um, but if you want to stop, then you want to raise your needle and raise your presser foot and when the needle is all the way up in this position you should be able to just pull your fabric and this will all slide over very easily and then you can just cut your thread and then you can take a look at the stitches that you uh, just made remember we did the small straight small zigzag, medium zigzag, and the medium straight. And you want to check and make sure that the thread looks, the tension and the thread looks correct on both sides. So, um, all right. Now, another key point to know is that when the presser foot is up, then your upper tension is not engaged. So that means I should be able to pull the thread out very easily. Once I put this presser foot down, the thread tensioner is now engaged and it is now hard to, to pull this out, okay? So don't, you know, don't force it or anything. But um, presser foot up and then you can pull the thread as much as you want. All right, so I think that is it on the utter basics on your machine, how to use it, and how to start being able to stitch safely. Um, if there are any questions, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye.